molecular vibration is an extremely important thing to understand that has a massive impact on our lives on the planet Earth. Okay? All these beautiful patterns that you see that the molecules are creating comes from this dance of translational motion, vibrational motion, and rotational motion. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the reason that molecules vibrate. When you hear your favorite song, what does it make you want to do? Sing and dance, right? When you hear your favorite tune, you start moving. When molecules hear the tune that they like, they start dancing. So the way that molecules vibrate, these beautiful patterns that they make when they vibrate, actually come from molecules dancing to their favorite tune. When you hear your favorite tune, you hear the waves, you hear the sound waves coming from your stereo, and then they hit your ears, and you hear your tune, and then it gives you energy, and it makes you want to move. The waves that make molecules excited are actually waves of light. So molecules dance to light waves, not sound waves. When a molecule experiences a wave of light that it likes, it starts vibrating faster. Actually, how molecules vibrate, it depends on the light that's around them. And molecules can do two things. They can both absorb light, so this is like you listening to your favorite tune. You absorb the light, and then they can emit the light, which is they start dancing, and then they emit the same light that they like. Each molecule in the universe has its own beat. And the way that they vibrate, the way that every molecule in the universe vibrates is slightly different. And it turns out that the way that scientists can measure what molecules are around us is by measuring their vibrational beats. That's, there's actually a form of science called vibrational spectroscopy where that's exactly what you do. You measure the vibrational beats of molecules. Now, if we could get the FFT state set up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start moving and you guys are gonna hear my vibe. So what the computer's doing is the computer's measuring the waves that I'm generating as I start swaying and so you're gonna hear my vibe. Just like I told you molecules have vibes, you're, li you're literally gonna hear my vibe. And when I stop, my sound stops. You're not dancing to the music, but your dance is actually making the music. Isn't that cool? But you just heard my vibe. But molecules have vibes too. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a few different molecules, and we're going to let you listen to their vibes. So the first molecule we're going to show you is, is oxygen. I told you oxygen has a bond with another oxygen molecule, and that makes O2, and the O2s vibrate. So you're hearing the molecular vibe. Just like you just heard my vibe, you're gonna hear the molecular vibe. You're literally hearing the vibe of oxygen molecules. So now we're gonna listen to another molecule. We're gonna listen to H2O. Let's hear how water sounds. So you can hear two tones in there, a deep tone and then a higher tone on top of it. Because water has two vibrations. Water has an oxygen, so pretend the oxygen is my head, and then it has two hydrogens. One of the vibrations is the hydrogens going like this, and the other one is the hydrogens going like this. And so you're actually hearing the two different vibrational sounds of water that comes from its two vibrations. So the last molecule that we're gonna let you hear is carbon dioxide. If you imagine I'm a carbon and my arms are the oxygens, the vibration you're hearing is something like this, because that's how it vibrates. The reason I've shown you the molecular vibrations is because it turns out that the dance of carbon dioxide, the vibrational dance of carbon dioxide is extremely important to every single person sitting in this room. Has anyone heard of climate change in here? Has anyone heard people say that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas? Okay, so the reason that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas is because of the way that it vibrates. When CO2 experiences heat energy coming from the sun, 
its vibe is the same as the heat, and it soaks up the heat, and that makes it excited. And so what happens is CO2 soaks up the heat in its vibrations that would otherwise go back into space. And then it releases that heat into the atmosphere and keeps it here. And then as it collides with all the rest of the molecules, it transfers that heat to all the other guys, warming everything up. For millions of years, before humans started, industry and the electricity consumption that we have now, CO2 is something that was very, very stable. But when the Industrial Revolution started, the concentration of carbon dioxide increased dramatically. And so we're going to increase the concentration of CO2 in this dome. You're seeing how much more CO2 is in the atmosphere as a result of human activities. And all those CO2s doing their beautiful little vibrational dances are now incredibly effective heat sponges, soaking up the energy from the sun and heating up the planet. And so this is an interesting challenge for my generation and for your generation of how we're going to solve this problem. And I don't really know how we're going to solve it, but I can tell you how it works.